Well, hello. Uh, looks like just me and Mama Goose for right now. But I got my new Vineyard Chicks t-shirt on, or Vineyard, yeah, vi Vineyard Chicks, yeah, t-shirt on, and my new Vineyard Chicks hat. So hopefully we'll get some others in here. Somebody just came in. Welcome to live, whoever you are. Say hello if you want. That way I know who I'm talking to. I'm going to stammer her for a little bit, little bit until we get a couple people in here, or maybe I'll just get started here in a second. So we've had two beautiful days back to back. Uh, the weather's been decent, and um, we are making progress on the hoop house. So the wind was rather calm today. We had a little bit of wind, but not too bad. Oh, I got the sign over here. Yeah, you could. There's nobody. And close that door if you want. that way. Very nice. Okay. So, looks like we got one person in. Um, say hello if you're out there. Yeah, we've been doing some work today on the hoop house. Yesterday I had to work at my real business and um, make a little bit of money. And then today we were out in the working on the hoop house. I got the other raised bed in on the west side, all the way along the, the west side of the hoop house. And um, I changed my mind about how I wanted the back of the hoop house to be. I was going to have a door there so I could bring the skid steer in and out. And I've decided that once I get it finished, I'm not going to need to bring the skid steer in. So I'm not going to put a door in the back. I'm just going to have a door in the front. And I had an old window, uh, a bypass window. It's six feet by four feet. So I put that up in the back. I'm going to do some some kind of a solid uh, siding uh, underneath that window and put something on the top that's sort of solid. And then I've got some louvers that go in on each side to let air in. I was going to have air blowing into the hoop house, but I've decided instead I'm going to use the blower to exhaust air, and then the louvers will open up to let air in. It'll make things... A little bit simpler, and I can use material that I have already as opposed to going out and buying material. So, looks like we got a few people here watching. If you want to hit that thumbs up button, that helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And it also lets me know that you're paying attention a little bit. And if you put a comment in the comment section, I'll know who you are in the chat section. And then I can say hello. But otherwise, hello to the four people who are here. Um, I did something a little bit odd. I, I don't know how well it's going to work. Along both sides of the hoop house, the full length, I put uh, cattle panels. And so on the east side of the hoop house, I've got um, cucumbers, that uh, pickling cucumbers that are going to grow. Uh, I planted national pickling cucumbers. And then on the other side, I've got some, I had a bunch of extra tomatoes that I didn't, I couldn't put them in the beds in the middle of the hoop house. And so I decided rather than planting them out in the field, I plant them along the side of the hoop house. So I'm not sure how well that's going to work. I'm going to run some lines down from the side. 
you know, let them grow up on the cattle panels and then eventually train them to uh, the line if they continue to grow. Our season sometimes doesn't allow us to get really tall tomatoes. Even if we trim them to a single vine last year, I think I only got about seven feet tall with my tomatoes. So I'm not sure that they're going to be long enough to uh, lean them, but we'll see. Um, I'm wondering... I don't know if my chat is working, mm. but uh, are you getting chat? Yeah. Oh. I'm not getting. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, so one of the, th the, the other thing we're doing in the hoop house, it's a little bit different than what I had planned. Originally, I planned to build a room right as you enter the hoop house. And that room was going to be for um, young seedlings. And also in the early, early part of the spring, let's say uh, April, um, I'd be able to put my flats out in the house during the day and then at night bring them into that inner room. Now, I still might build that inner room but I'm going to put the plastic on before I build it. And probably, I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably going to get the plastic on maybe even Sunday if it's calm enough. Um, I think we're going to end up working on Monday, so I won't be able to do it then. But, um, you know, kind of the idea, once I get that, covered, then maybe this winter it'll be warm enough in there to build out that germination room. I can heat that, and then eventually I'm going to run heat lines into the raised beds so that I can heat the raised beds. If I do that, I think I can actually plant tomatoes in 15th of April maybe, and um, by the time we get to, say, um, May 31st, which is when I normally plant them, I might have some uh, some plants on there. Gail Southern Living, hello, welcome to the live. Uh, not a lot of people here, but that's all right. I'm just going to talk about my greenhouse. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section, or if you want to comment on something, that's cool. I am wearing my new Vineyard Chicks t-shirt and my new Vineyard Chicks hat. Uh, I'm pretty sure, Gail, I'm pretty sure you watched that mail call video where I got this stuff. Um, they also sent me some flavored vinegar, which we haven't had a chance to try yet, but we will soon. Um, thank you, Gail. Uh, you know, one of the things with, with building the hoop house, I, I experienced the same thing you did. You lost your hoop house this spring. Four years ago, I lost my hoop house. It was 100 feet long and uh, 20 feet wide. And we had just gotten the, the plastic covering on, and we got a straight line wind that went from west to east. And we had debris from... Uh, towns that were 30 miles away came into our into our fields. So, and it completely destroyed the plastic on the hoop house. But, oh, everybody's live tonight? Well, that's all right. We'll have a, maybe a short live here. Um, but uh, Joe's here. Welcome, Joe. Yeah, I... I uh, I wanted to do a little tribute to the Vineyard Chicks. They did a nice thing sending me this stuff. This is actually one of my favorite styles of ball cap. Uh, most ball caps, notice this one's got this bigger cap. This one's a little bit smaller, and it's not that it doesn't fit. It's the way that it's designed. It's more like a baseball cap. 
and uh, I just I, I like the way it fits better than some of the other ones. Um, so, Joe, this morning I was thinking of you as I picked bushels of vertilaca from my garden, and I was trying to figure out how am I going to send that stuff to Joe Serrano in Mexico. And I don't have mine on right now. Ma Mama Goose says she doesn't have her gin Vineyard Chicks uh, t-shirt on right now. But uh, yeah, I was just chatting a little bit about the greenhouse, letting people know what I'm doing on it. I'm not going to repeat all that, but uh, Arizona kid. Yeah, that's what Gail said. I go live every Thursday night, so I don't know who else is live. I was going to go stream yard tonight, and I forgot to set it up as a stream yard, so um, I'll have to figure that one out. Saturday night, 7 o'clock, I'm going to be live. I'm going to be talking about... Um, an apparent contradiction in the scriptures between the Apostle Paul and James. Uh, James was the half-brother half of Jesus Christ. And um, James says that faith without works is dead, and Paul says that all works are as filthy rags. So that appears to be a contradiction, but we're going to look deep into it and see what we think. Arizona kid says he's just going live the first of every month. He doesn't care what day it is. Well, that'll work. Were you, were you live today? I just got in from working in the field, so I haven't been paying attention. But Yeah, that's what I – Joe, I don't know if you could dehydrate them, if they would still be any good. Um but man, I got, I got like, I took probably 20 bushels of uh, purslane, and that's just in one garden. Um, there's probably, if I were to actually pull it off, I don't, I don't remove the purslane in the squash unless it's right close to the squash. And the squash will eventually build a big enough canopy to block it off. But it's just too too much to do, and it doesn't seem to really cause a great deal of trouble. Um, but with the um, with the red root amaranth, I'll tell you, you can have all that too. I, I took several bushels of that out from just in around my corn, and. Uh, that's why I've never really been big on growing corn is that without using pesticides, it's so hard to, if, if you're going to mechanically weed, you've got to have them so far apart to mechanically weed with my equipment. And if you're going to uh, do it with chemicals, well, then you need the equipment for that as well. Because, you know, they say knee high by 4th of July. My sweet corn right now is probably four feet tall. And we haven't had a lot of rain. Uh, I have irrigated it. But once that big rain hit, uh, everything took off. And I mean everything. The squash is doing real well. The potatoes are spectacular. I've never seen potatoes as rich as these. But... All right, so Joe is saying with the with the purslane, just wash the purslane well, chop some onion, tomato, and a clove of garlic, just like spinach. It will shrink, and that's all. If you like porks, cut some pork tenderloin. It is so good. Um, Joe, we're going to try that. Anything with chopped up onions and garlic in it is, is for me, so... And I love pork. Uh, in fact, I got one of my customers paid me with about 50 pounds of pork sausage. So 
but uh, I can get some pork tenderloin. It'll work, and uh, we'll uh, we'll give that a try. I might even uh, might even do a video on us giving it a try and do a reaction video. So, Joe, if I don't have that video out by the end of July. Hold my feet to the fire on that. We'll we'll do that. How does it taste like Sandy, Sandy said, as long as it doesn't taste taste like collards. Uh, unfortunately, we had a bad experience with uh, with collards. Everybody says they're good. We had some collards somewhere, and man, they taste like they'd been soaked in in uh, diesel oil. I'm just reading uh, Joe's comment to Arizona Kid. Yeah, I actually, Sandy called me to come in from the field at about 6 o'clock, and I uh, got in, had a little bit of dinner, and uh, went right on the live stream. So, but... Uh, Everything right now, uh, other than keeping the weeds out, we don't have anything. Re well, we do. We have um, Swiss chard and kale can be harvested. And Sandy harvested about, what, seven uh, asparagus today. Eight. It's only I can, that's only I can find. I couldn't, I couldn't bend down. Yeah, there's uh, the asparagus right now has gone to fern, so uh, you can see that you can see some coming up, and you can harvest those. Um, but Sandy had hernia, hernia surgery, so it's a little hard for her to bend down and and uh, pick that stuff. So. My beets have done poorly this year, just poor germination. I planted them twice, and uh, the ones that did come up are doing pretty well. But Joe says, I've never tried collards. Would like to, especially the tree collards that John Kohler recommends having in your garden. I used to watch John Kohler. He um, he's a little bit too organic for me. Um, I just have a hard time. I just had well, and and the way he gardens too is really intense. I uh, have a lot of space, so he, he gardens really intensely, and I think I like to play on the tractors more than more than I like to garden. So. Um, Probably that might be part of my problem. <laughs> so, oh, the orchard, the apples are doing real well. We haven't had a good harvest of apples in probably four years. So, if, uh, you know, God willing, we won't get a lot of wind. That's what usually happens. We'll get a lot of wind, it'll knock all the buds off or knock the branches together, and everything seems to fall apart but but it looks like some fresh people have come into the live say hello so that we know who you are and uh, we're just chatting about garden and talked a little bit about the hoop house at the beginning and uh, nothing really planned for today just kind of sitting back and chatting Gail's lurking. That's all right. I appreciate it. Um, the Arizona kid, you uh, you do a lot with the four wheelers and things like that. Do you think? Uh, have you looked at the John Deere Gator at all? And do you think 
that's the way to go, or is there a better a better utility four wheeler out there? I know you've got one. And I can't remember what yours is, but we're looking at. I've been thinking about getting a Gator. Um, it's a little overkill for us. We pull. We use our four wheeler to pull our our trailer through the field and when we harvest. But it would be a Gator might be a little nicer and might help moving things around. Um, Joe, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure she made apple pies with our apples. Yeah, she's made what she makes. The pies that I really like are the strawberry rhubarb. I am um, not a big fan of rhubarb by itself, but when you put strawberry and rhubarb together, sometimes she'll make a sauce that we can put on vanilla ice cream. And, uh, but yeah, she's made, uh, one year, these weren't from our apples, but one year uh, a friend of mine got me about six bushels of apples, and they were they were marked up a little bit. And I have a processor for apples, so what you do is you you quarter them and you boil them for just a few minutes. Um, I don't know, three or four minutes, five minutes maybe. And then you run them through this machine, and it cranks, and it shoots the all of the waste material, you know, the seeds, the stringy stem, all the skin comes off, and the pulp goes into a into a bowl. And I, I forget how many quarts of applesauce we put up. And then... Uh, we had that for... The whole year we had applesauce, I think. But it even takes like if you've got if you've got a wormhole or something. Now, some of the the brown uh, bruised area might go through, but anything hard is going to get kicked out. Uh, Freedom Foods Farm, welcome to the live. We're just talking about the garden and food and Joe Serrano was teaching me how to eat weeds and um, we're talking about apples so welcome to the live we're just messing around um, yeah we've got what seven I think I think I've got seven apple trees that are still producing um, you want to show that oh. Mama Goose is working on some uh, on some merch, and uh, she's got some ideas going on. So, um, but uh, the last couple years, we really haven't we really haven't gotten a lot of apples. About four years ago, it was about four years ago. Yeah, we took apples to market. Uh, my brother-in-law actually took him to market, and um, he sold a lot of apples. I've got yellow Jonathans, and uh, I've got yellow Jonathans, red Jonathans, and um, what's the other one? Uh, honey, honey crisp. No, and it's not a honey crisp, but it's the same Fuji. It's a Fuji apple, I think, and it's it's very similar to the Honeycrisp, but you know, a different uh, different patents than the Honeycrisp. So, but one of the problems we have with apples, and I, I think I intentionally planted them where they are to try to keep them a little bit out of the wind, but that puts them to where they're getting shade in the afternoon. And I'm not sure that that's the best for them. But we get so much wind that um, if if we get it at the wrong time, it's it's bad. Porchlight Gardener, welcome to the live. Uh, glad to have you here. We're just chatting about 
all kinds of things. Talking about, I got my hoop house a little further along. Hopefully, we'll get the plastic on. I've been saying this all summer, but our spring, but hopefully, I'll get the plastic on by the end of this week or next week. It all depends on if we get a calm day. Yesterday would have been perfect, but I wasn't quite uh, wasn't quite ready. Porch Light Gardener says, "Glad to be here. I'm grateful that you're here. I am." You know, um, I just make a small announcement. Saturday night at 7 o'clock Central Time, uh, I'm going to be on live again. And I'm going to be uh, talking about an apparent conflict in Scripture between the writer of James, James, who is the half-brother of Christ, and the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul says all works are like filthy rags. James says that faith without works is dead. So which is the case? Is our works legit or are they not legit? So, so Joe Serrano says, is honey crisp similar taste to the gala apple? We get imported apples from the States, just gala red and yellow delicious and Granny Smith. I've seen pics of honey crisp look similar to galas. So the honey crisp is, um, I would say, I don't know what a gala is, but uh, it's very similar to, um, say, a Jonathan or a... Um, but uh, the Granny Smiths, that's going to be your, your baking apple. That's your tart, tart apple. Um, but if anyone else knows, far, life, far, far, far North Life, welcome to live. Thank you for coming out. Um, if you mix them in different with different stuff you can do apples with rhubarb strawberries yeah apple rhubarb is great too um not as good as strawberry rhubarb but apple and rhubarb gives you that tart as well as the sweet taste um i like that a lot just trying to catch up on the chat here a little bit uh Everybody have all their plants in. Yeah, you know, I just planted actually um, the last plants of the first planting of my garden. We will plant some more um, cabbage. We'll plant some more uh, kohlrabi. Um, we're oh yeah, we haven't planted even the first radishes. Radishes come up so quick. Um, but I don't, I don't really care for them. I mean, I like them on a salad and a little bit, but um, they sell really well. So uh, they take about 30 days. So we expect to go to market in August. Uh, so I need to start planting my radishes. Believe it or not, I'm going to plant them in the greenhouse uh, or the hoop house. I'll probably plant some out in the field as well, but I think they'll grow a little faster in the hoop house and I'll have them ready by our first. We're probably going to, the second week and in August will be our first trip to the market. Um, as far as, as far as I can see right now, we, we might, we might get, the last week of July, I'll be going. I won't be uh, able to go to market on uh, the first weekend in August, but that'll give us five, six markets to go to, and that's probably enough. So, Gail is asking, "Do you grow strawberries?" We do. Um, we have two big. I, I cut a 
500 gallon tank in half. It was a water tank. We got it, uh, we cleaned out a factory where they made sucrose. And so this had been part of the sucrose product uh, process. And uh, I had this tank for years and finally we cut it in half, flipped the two halves over, filled them up with uh, some dirt with some horse manure and some other stuff. And we've been growing strawberries for two years out of that. Um, we don't, I don't, we didn't get like a bumper crop, but we got a lot of really good strawberries, but we didn't get as many as I thought we would. Uh, but these are ever bearing, so we might get them all summer long. Joe, um, Joe's asking if you could root a rhubarb stalk like you do a celery stalk. I have, there's a video on, um, but well, on the celery stalks, and I, I know, I, I guess you're saying Gail did the video. Maybe that's where I saw it. <laughs> but I would think, I wouldn't think you'd be able to root off of a rhubarb stalk because the way you do rhubarb is you, you break it off in the field. But you could probably, if it's got the leaf end on it, you might be able to get that to root if it's still fresh. But I don't know that you'd be able to do it from the stalk. Um, oh, Arizona kid, what I was asking you is if you know anything about the John Deere Gator, uh, if, if that's a, a decent um, machine. I know you're I don't know if you're if you look at that kind of stuff, but it's the same kind of motors as the stuff you've got, I think. Gray Mountain Farm, welcome to the live. Glad to have you here. I'm not sure there's quite a few faces that I'm not sure if I've seen in the lives before. Jan might be able to um, ask, answer Joe's question. Yeah. You mean Gil? Or you mean Jan? Joe asked, Jan rooted celery. Oh, shirts. yeah, I, I mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. But she might have rhubarb that she's tried it. Oh, Gail sent you over. Well, thank you very much. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to. We're on every Thursday night. Normally, I have a little bit of a prepared first half hour, but um, I uh, this whole week, we got quite a bit of rain early in the week, or actually on the weekend, and um, so the fields, the amaranth is taken over, the amaranth and the um, uh, oh, now I can't think of the name of it, but the weeds have just really taken over. So we've been we've been working all day, all night. So so I'll have to look thank you, Arizona kid. I'll have to look into the uh, Honda Pioneer. Everything that I've ever had by Honda has been great. So um hey Swafford Homestead, welcome. Gail, I appreciate it. You know, we're um, we're really the funny thing is I hear people talk about our cabin in the woods. Welcome to the life. I hear people talking about you know they hit their thousand and they need watch hours. Well, I'm closer to monetizing with my watch hours by far. I'm about halfway there in subscribers, just a little bit short of halfway. But um, I've actually hit the uh, the watch hours. I'm down a little bit right now because one of the videos that got a lot of views, you know, got it early on. So I had, I had one that did really well early on, and that's already a year ago. So um, 
Yeah, I didn't think I had seen Porchlight Gardener in here before. So welcome. Thank you for coming by. Um, Simply Jan's Homestead. Welcome. Welcome to the live. Uh, I, I got to put my... I got to put my vineyard chicks hat on for you. So, um, so Jan hasn't done it either. Okay. So, we'll tell, tell Joe we'll try it. so Joe, we're going to experiment with the rhubarb. Um, we're going to see if we can get it to root. I don't know if it will or not. We'll give it a try. Our cabin in the woods. Welcome to the live. Thank you for coming by. We're just chatting about the garden. Um, you know, I watch some of these uh, southern sites, and I see you guys are already getting green. Uh, oh, thank you, Joe. You guys are already getting red tomatoes. and I've got a couple little bitty uh, big boy tomatoes that have come on. I never get tomatoes until July. Usually, I usually have sweet 100s by now. You know, little cherry tomatoes. Um, I don't. I don't have any. Uh, it, it was so dry. I think that had a lot to do with it. And um, the drip lines. Once once the roots get down, the drip lines do really well but I put my drip lines down at about four to six inches. I, I try to keep them at four, but they get a little deep sometimes. And so it can be, it can be difficult to get enough water uh, up to the roots. Cause if, if you're planting your plant, maybe two, two and a half inches deep until they get their roots down to that drip line, it's hard to get enough water to go up. You, you get some, but, once they hit that two and a half inches, you know, around that drip tape, boy, then it's, it's, it really works well, but you've got to get it, you got to get it down there. The other thing is we've been having trouble. Um, somebody keeps running over my drip line and uh, with the rototiller and, uh, I'm just going to have to stop using the rototiller. So, okay, I fast stop. Well, you hit it with the lawnmower. That that's not too bad. You hit the main header with the lawnmower. That wasn't too bad. I I I wound about 15 feet of tubing around my rototiller. That was bad. But um, it all worked out. Oh, John's here. He he's lurking in the background. He'll he'll come on at the end of the live and say, "Ha ha ha, I was here." But um, I've got a video coming out that that John is just going to really love. It's um, it's going to be. I think it's going to be his favorite video. I I think he's going to probably. Uh, I think he's probably going to listen to it a lot. Um, it, uh, it might be the conclusion of the Bunky episode, but we'll see how that goes. Where is Gavin in the woods? They got 12.5 inches. Right. 12.5 inches of rain. Uh, our cabin in the woods, remind me where you're at. I was thinking you were up in the upper peninsula, but they didn't get that much rain up there. Well, not, not Michigan, the Upper Peninsula. I know it's technically part of Michigan, but not by choice. Well, it's... So, let's see. Yeah, 12 and a half inches of rain... That's what we usually get uh, in the spring of the year. Uh, I had an area of my field that flooded every 
single year. And we'd plant it and it would flood and it would kill off some of what we planted, but it would usually recede. And then for about four years, it, it flooded and killed everything. So I put a bunch of work into building it up and cut some swales in and put a swale between the, the field and my field, you know, the, my neighbor's field and my field. And my neighbor spent, I, I think he spent a lot putting in some drain tile and venting his drain tile. And uh, it took him about three years to get it in to where it was really working well. And now we don't get any water in that area. But the last two years, we haven't had wet springs, so it's kind of hard to, hard to tell. Last year, we got a little bit of a wet spring, but it wasn't like it had been. Oklahoma. Well, it, that's kind of unusual. I, I wouldn't think that this time of year, but yeah, you're getting that, those storms that are coming up through Florida and everything, I guess, I, I suppose. I don't watch that stuff very carefully, but I know I heard Washington had 110 degree weather. And I don't think, I don't think Washington ever gets that kind of, that kind of rain or I mean that kind of heat. Um, but yeah, you get that kind of rain at this time of year on well-established field corn. That's not a bad thing. you it'll, it, it might yellow just a little bit, but if the fields are drained, they'll be fine. The problem is everything else. Soybean would be gone. Um, wheat, depending upon the field, the wheat would probably be destroyed, but um, it actually might be cut by now in Oklahoma. So, Corn smut. I've heard of that, but I don't know. I'm going to look that up because I've heard of that, but I don't really know what it is. Corn smut. Gail, you've had flooding down in Texas? disease caused by pathological and fungus. Oh. Gail, I don't know how that jury system's going to work. We, we've been sort of goofing around with it. And then actually we've had some, some medical uh, issues uh, that have kept us from doing too much other than uh, trying to keep ahead on the garden. But uh, Fugle, Frugal Farmer Channel, hey, welcome. Thank you for stopping in. Thank you for coming by the live. Um, we're just we're just chatting a little bit here. In fact, we'll probably, probably draw this to an end eventually, but um, Joe has given us all kinds of new ways to use to eat weeds, and uh, now there's corn smut. I don't know. I think I'm going to have to send you some beets, Joe. Uh, we'll can you up some beets and send them down. Oh, thank you again. Uh, thank you, Gail. I, I appreciate it. Um, we're uh, we're doing our best here, and uh, 
I'm having I'm having a lot of fun with the YouTube. It 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 brings a different dimension to the gardening. It brings a little bit of a different dimension to, um, you know, we live pretty secluded from everyone, and it, it's kind of nice to have some people that you can come on and chat with. Now, I haven't been to many of the lives lately because I had some oral surgery done and my wife had hernia surgery. And so between all of that and then work and everything, it's, 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 it's easier to do this stuff in the wintertime. But, uh, if she's ever heard of strawberry jalapeno. So we're at 480 now. Thank you so much, Frugal Farmer Channel. I appreciate it. Moon Sprouts, how are you? Welcome to the, the live. And thank you for stopping by 481. Hey, you people are fantastic. Um, all of you, those of you who subscribed a long time ago, those of you who aren't subscribed, you're all still fantastic. But yes, so, strawberry jalapeno. Well, I will in a second. So Joe Serrano says, when it rains, the ears of corn get wet. And with the summer heat, makes a fungus over the ear of corn. Uh, form an ear of corn to the ear of corn smut. One large ear of corn smut costs, whoo. 25 pesos, about a dollar 25 US. Uh, we're going to have to look into that. I'll just overwater my corn because there's a lot of there's a lot of people in in town here from Mexico. In fact, I used to bring my uh, purslane in, and I had a guy who would buy it. But um, last year, I think we had had some and we didn't we didn't sell any of it so yeah back in the 70s you could buy a lot for a dollar we're at uh per dozen average price up here uh last year was 450 a dozen and there is a, a corn up here called mirai and it's eight bucks a dozen, uh, if you can even get it. But you know, we can get Walmart. What's fifty cents a year? Yeah, Walmart will be like fifty cents an ear. So that's do the math. Well, fifty cents an ear is pretty good. That's pretty expensive. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, so that's about three. 50 a dozen or something like that. Um, I know a couple of years ago, another be $6 a dozen. $6 a dozen. We're giving the stuff away. I know a couple of years ago, I bought corn. I bought um, several. You, you, you buy it, it's, it's, I think it was three dozen to a box. Was it three dozen or was it six dozen? I think it was three dozen to a box. And I bought probably 30 boxes of this stuff up from, uh, was it Georgia? We had a connection with somebody who had a truck that could bring it up for us. And uh, my brother-in-law arranged it all. I think we sold it for 350 a dozen, three or three. No, we sold it for 250 a dozen. And then I had some left over the second week, so I sold somebody a case of it, which was, I think it was three dozen in the case. And I think we sold the case for like five bucks or something because it was a week old. It had been in the refrigerator, but, um, and I told him if it was no good, let me know and I'd give him his money back, but he never did. I don't think I ever did talk to him again, but um yeah, Pafford says we grow our own sweet corn, so we never price it. Um, I don't grow, well, this year I'm growing sweet corn, but this is the first year in 10 years that I've grown sweet corn. And uh, 
we the problem is I am surrounded all the way, uh, all four sides of me. I'm surrounded by field corn. And so this year I talked to my neighbor. I found out his germination date or not germination date, pollination date. And uh, so in other words, at what point will the corn tassel? And I counted back from that. And I said, well, I can't, I'll have to wait two weeks. So I waited two weeks and I planted so that my corn theoretically will tassel after his corn is done tasseling. Otherwise you could cross pollination and sweet corn will not be the dominant. It, the, the dominant is going to be the field corn. So if you cross pollinate, it, it, it's going to be, the field corn is going to be dominant. So uh, at least half of our field will then end up being dent corn. The problem is you can't tell the difference really. If, if you planted those seeds, you'd see the difference, but you can't in the first generation or the first year, you can't tell the difference between what is sweet corn and what is field corn. Now, normally field corn grows about a foot and a half taller than sweet corn, unless you're growing that stuff that will it grow grows. And then you need a helicopter to get to the, to the cobs or a bucket truck or something like that. I think he just cuts it down to get the ears. Oh, he climbed the ladder last year. Well, I guess he climbed the ladder last year saying he was saying, I don't, I don't remember. I just remember thinking I got to get some of those seeds because it'll drive my neighbors crazy. But, um, I missed something here and uh, so, all right. Well, I'm going to give a little commercial here one more time before I go. Saturday, 7 o'clock Central Time, um, I will be live again, and I'm going to talk about an apparent contradiction in the Bible. On the one hand, you have the Apostle Paul saying, all works are as filthy rags, and on the other hand, you have James, the half-brother of Jesus Christ, and he is saying, that faith without works is useless. And we're going to try to determine, are they disagreeing with one another or is there something else going on there? So that's Saturday night at seven o'clock central, eight o'clock Eastern, and uh, there's no charge. <laughs> and then we'll record it for you. If you can't be there Saturday, you can always come back and see it. Once again, a, a great thank you to Gail and uh, Homestead Aquarius. Yeah, if, if you're in the in the room here, hit that thumbs up. Um, Homestead Aquarius announced a new feature in Shed Wars. If you didn't catch his video, uh, go check that out. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, to be honest, Robert, I don't think I can help too much with what to do in the case of a drought. Um, we don't get many droughts here, and when we do, I, I just water a lot, and my well is so far hasn't run dry. I was worried about it running dry this year, but um, I, um, I'm looking forward to when you post what do you do about too much water. I'd like to see what people are doing. I uh, I just say goodbye to my plants when we get too much water, usually. <coughs> so, um, hey, 
Hey, Homestead usually shows up at my live streams. He's uh, the Frogman. So Aquaman. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, folks, those of you who came over from Gales, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome to come again. I'm here on Thursday nights. Um, Yogi Hollow Farm, welcome. New subscriber, thank you. Um, appreciate it. Gail, I, I, uh, once we get some merch put together here, we'll get some out to you and uh, some of the others too. Um, It, it, this has been, you know, every summer we say this, and I'm sure you do too. It's like summer comes and where we are, we've got maybe four, five months that you got to get your everything done in. I mean, if you want to paint the house, you got to do it in the summer. Um, we've got roofs that have to go on barns. We've taken three trees down. Two of them were, you know, three feet across and it's nothing but work. Um, and you try to get that done, try to get the lives done, try to watch lives. It's just, it's, it's harder this year. Well, last year we were quarantined a little bit more than we are this year. Um, I mean, my business in heating and air conditioning, we we're still essential workers, so we were out. But people didn't really want us out for maintenance. This year, it's been really busy. A lot of shortages, but um, it's been busy. So thank you all for coming out. If I missed any of you, if I didn't say hi, it's not because I'm rude. It's because I don't have glasses on and trying to watch the chat. Um, you know, uh, Yogi Hollow Farm says it is hard. I agree. Farm life and, and work is a lot. Yeah. You know, and you can't, I mean, on the little, little farms that we've got here, I mean, my neighbors, they're farming 7,000 acres and you say, well, oh, they've got to be busy as can be. Yeah. But they've got seven million dollars worth of machinery that they're running too and i mean they're just they're running all day long though so um pafford homes thanks for for coming by i know you've got a lot going on out there too i'm gonna i'm gonna cut this off so thank you all for coming out mitzvah I'll see you again. I'm Chicken Johnny. Eat your vegetables. And don't forget, 7 o'clock Saturday, same channel, 7 o'clock Central Time. Uh, we'll be talking about the Bible and specifically whether it's faith alone or faith with works. What does all that mean? And we're going to, I'm going to try to get out to everybody's channel who stopped by. I hope you commented so I, I remember otherwise I'll check here on the channel. I am very grateful. Thank you so much. You all have a great night, great week, great year, great life. We'll see you again soon, I hope. That was wonderful. Yeah.